Amen. It's nice to hear some of them sing uh, in a smaller group. They do a good job, but uh, I'm, I'm encouraged to see uh, more folks getting involved. That's, uh, that's encouraging. 2 Timothy chapter, uh, chapter 2 this morning. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. And uh, complete in thee. That's a good goal. That's a wonderful thing to shoot for, desire in, in our lives, uh, to be everything that God wants us to be and, and planned for us to be and hoped that we would be. And so uh, that's, a, that's a wonderful objective. And so Second Timothy chapter number 2, and uh, have you found your spot this morning? Amen, amen. amen is the positive answer if you have. Amen. Again, have you place this morning? All right, let's stand together if you can, if you're able, if you're willing, and let's read. Let's focus on two verses. I'm going to preach from a lot more than two, but uh, let's focus on two verses, verses 9 and 10. Wherein I suffer trouble, Paul writes, as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. I want you to take notice this morning of Paul's desire, of what Paul said was worth and worthy him suffering. He said for the word of God and for the salvation of the elect. By the way, just because God knows who's saved doesn't mean that they will. Who's going to be saved doesn't mean that they will. See, that's the Calvinist error right there. Well, God chose the elect, and, and so they're elect, so they, they have to go to heaven. No, they don't. God would like to. He'd like to save anyone. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God chooses. He elects. Just like I might in the next election cycle, I might Mark off who I want to elect. But that doesn't make them the next president or congressman or anything else. Paul says here, I am willing to do whatever it takes so that the elect might get saved. Get saved, and he says, "I'm. It's worth suffering for. It's worth sacrificing for. 
It's worth anything I might have to endure to get what God wants. I want to preach this morning about things that are worth suffering for. Let's pray, Father. I thank you for your love, your mercy, and grace. I pray that you help us this morning to see that there are some things in life that aren't worth suffering for, while others, well, Father, they're, they're worth whatever we might have to go through, whatever we might have. desires, things that we're willing to, 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 we want to accomplish and we're willing to sacrifice other things to get them, right? Whatever it might be, you know, this week I mentioned earlier in, uh, in our vacation Bible school this past week, uh, the young people had a list of verses when they came. Uh, we sent them home with a whole list of verses. Psalm 27, 1, Psalm 27, 11, Psalm 18, 2, Psalm 119, 105, Psalm 23, 6, Psalm 40, verse 10, Psalm 69, uh, 5, uh, Matthew 5, 14, 2 Corinthians 4, 3, uh, Proverbs 1, 10, Pro, uh, Psalm 119, verse 10, Psalm 119, verse 11, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 6, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21, and also Luke chapter 12 and verse 21. Now, they, some of these young people worked on that list and they memorized those. In fact, one young man memorized the whole thing. You say, why did he go about doing that? He could have been off playing. He could have been off uh, fishing. He could have been off doing something else. But what, what made him do that? He wanted a prize. See, we told him at the beginning of the week, if whoever memorized the most verses in the Bible and can quote them accurately can come here at the end of the week and, and they'll get to, to pick a prize from this uh, from this pile of, uh, of uh, prizes we got up here. We told them if you'd bring a visitor, you'd, you'd get to uh, pick up a prize at the end. If, if, uh, if you were faithful, you'd get a prize. You know, different things that they would get a prize over. And some of them sacrificed their time. Some of them sacrificed their, their you know, they gave up other things so that they could accomplish that goal, right? What about our goal? What about our objectives? What's, what is it in your life that you have set your ambitions on? You said, man, this is a worthy goal for me. I'm going to sacrifice time, energy, money, whatever it is. I'm going to sacrifice so that I can get this. What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to suffer? See, suffer? I don't know about no suffering, preacher. Well, some people are willing to suffer for, for certain things. What are you willing to suffer, to suffer to accomplish your goals? You know, as a young man, and I mean as a, as a younger man, right? I'm still a young man. But when I was younger, I desired to be a millionaire. I've achieved my goal. You didn't know that, did you, Miss Pat? But see, you can't count my millions in dollars. Most of the time I count them in hugs, right? I, I sacrificed, Miss Pauline, my desire to be a million-dollar man with cash, the green stuff. My wife and I have 12 children, and they're worth more than a million to me. They're probably worth a million apiece. I'm a multimillionaire, almost practically a billionaire. But you know what I had to give up to have those kids? My desire to be a dollar millionaire. What are you willing to suffer for? What are you willing to sacrifice? My wife asked me the other day. She goes, honey, I just got to know something. She goes, I got up. She got up with me uh, 
I guess three days last week, two or three days, she went with me and we collected honey. Right? We went around, we went to the bee yards, and you know what it was last week? It was hot. It was hot. We'd show up at the bee yard mid-morning, we'd start, you know, getting things together and, and working, getting the honey taken off the bee. Do you know that bees aren't very happy when you start taking their honey away? They're not. Said you get stung? Of course I did. The honey bear always gets stung once or twice. But the honey bear gets his honey. And now there's boxes of honey stacked up in my kitchen waiting on us to sp finish spinning it out. But, you know, she said, uh, "Hun, I just got to understand something. We go out there, and it is hot, and you are sweating, to, I mean, to the socks, right? Your shoes are slopping like you've been walking in the mud puddles uh, when you come back from working the bees. And why? I said, because... It's not just because I like honey, and it's not just because I like bees, and it certainly isn't because I like the heat. It's because I want to provide for my family. And that provides just enough to be able to do some special things uh, with my kids because they are worth sacrificing for. They are worth doing a little extra for, right? So anyway, yes, there are times in the year, especially... Uh, come in July, <laughs> that I think, why do I do this? And I have to say, because you love your kids, and you love your family, and you want to provide the best you can for them, right? I'm just saying there are some things in our lives that we are willing to sacrifice and sacrifice for and sacrifice to get. So what things are you willing to sacrifice and sacrifice for? What, what are you willing to suffer to get or to have? You say, well, I don't know if that, I, I, that applies to me, preacher, because I'm not willing to do any of that. Well, you have, and you do. There's a lot of people willing to suffer for freedom, and I'm thankful for the men and women who gave their lives and who sacrificed their, their life, their energy, their time, their talent, their whatever, to be able to go and defend our country. Those men and women who uh, served in the military. Thank you for that. Defending our liberties, some of them dying so that we could have this freedom. I want you to notice in 2 Timothy chapter 2 here, a verse that I see here in verse number 4. Uh, the Apostle Paul writing here, he says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Now, of course, we're talking about Bible, and, and, you know, this is a spiritual lesson, but I want you to notice the application of this and, and, and how this fits. Know that no man warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Do you know, do you realize that the men and women who sign up for the military, they have to move away from their home and have to move homes on a regular basis, most of the time, every two to three years. They have to pull up all their roots, pull up everything, pull up all their connections, all their friendships, and they have to move away somewhere else, put down new roots, set up their house, and, and, and figure out life in a new place. I'm just saying it's a sacrifice. And they do that. Why? Notice what it says. That he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Say, well... I didn't choose him to be a soldier. No, but you chose freedom. You want to be an American citizen, and you enjoy the freedom. And those people do what they do so that you and I can stay here and enjoy our life the way it is. Think about that for a moment. person signs up for the U.S. Navy. They get signed to a uh, submarine. They'll be put on that submarine, and it goes down under the ocean for six months. Oh, it might pop up here and there, get a little fresh air. But they are gone from their family. They are gone from their friends. They are out of touch with the outside world for six months at a go, usually. Some of those 
fellows that sign up or gals that sign up for, uh, for the Army or the, uh, the, the uh, Marines out there camping in the wilderness, dirt, dust, eating those rations and all that stuff. That's a sacrifice. They're willing to suffer. Wearing them boots out, getting calluses on their, on their feet. Why? For you and I, so that we can have freedom. Right? I'm just talking about the things that people regularly, even today, suffer for and choose to suffer for and go through things for. And yes, it's a spiritual lesson. And yes, we, we have a, He says, No man worth entangling themselves with affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. By the way, we're soldiers in God's army. If we've accepted Christ as our Savior, we belong to him. We are his soldier and he chose us. What are we willing to do? for God and God's army. I'm thankful for our men and women who joined the armed forces uh, so that we can enjoy the freedoms and the opportunity to live without fear. Some people are willing to suffer for their health. Mm. Can you believe what some people eat in the name of health? Oh my. I mean... Some of that stuff, I don't even know. It, I don't think you're supposed to eat that. Right? They call it health food, but I'm not too sure. Notice what it says in uh, 1 Timothy. Back up uh, to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Just flip over a page. Look at verse 8 there. Notice what, notice what God's Word says. It says, for bodily exercise profiteth little. That's one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. <laughs> I'm teasing, of course. But notice the rest of it. But godliness, but godliness, by the way, it's exercise to be godly as well. Godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. But, you know, some people do choose to suffer things for health or for, uh, you know, exercise. And, you know, that break their bones and, and, and go out and run. I saw a, a person running the other day. I was in the bee yard. Of course, I was all hot and sweaty. And they're probably thinking, what is that lunatic doing over there dressed in a bee suit on a day like today? Doesn't he know it's hot? <laughs> he knows well. But then I'm looking back and saying, why is that crazy person running in this heat on the, on the asphalt? I mean, why would you want to do that, right? I'm just saying some people will suffer for some things and other people suffer for different things, right? And God says that that bodily exercise that a lot of us suffer for, it profiteth, but it profiteth a little. And what we ought to be willing to suffer for is that spiritual exercise because there is a home in heaven that God is preparing for us if we'll choose to suffer for it. Some folks suffer for their sport or their job or their hobby. It's the most, most important thing in life to them. And they'll sacrifice everything they got. They'll sacrifice their time and their energy and their money and all that other stuff for the pride of knowing that I am the best or one of the best at whatever this thing is. But what is so important to me? So what's so important to you that we're willing to sacrifice that we might obtain it. Look, look at 2 Timothy again, chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Notice this time verse number 5. It says, And if a man also strive for masteries, that is to be the best at something, to master something, it says, Yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Right, you're running a race to go get that ribbon or that whatever that is, that, 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 that prize for running the race. You can't cheat and cut across country or cut across the middle of the track. Right? They'll disqualify you. You can't add the corn syrup to your honey. It's not honey anymore if you do that, by the way. 
Can't put extra little tasty stuff in there. It's not honey anymore. Listen, people do all kinds of things to try to become the best because of their pride. They're willing to sacrifice a lot of things, even their own name, to have that objective. But I want you to consider this morning, what does God say? What does the Word of God say? What does God think about things that are worthy to suffer for? I want you to notice, of course, most of you know this verse, John 3.16. We know that, right? We could quote it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sacrificed himself. He allowed his Son to die on the cross to pay for our sin debt. That's a sacrifice. God was willing to suffer for us. That's pretty special. He gave of himself. He came down and, and, and dwelt among us and, and got dirty with us, you might say. He came and lived among us so that he could pay our sin debt. That's what our verse says. And by the way, the verse from last month, Romans 5.10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled unto God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. He was willing to sacrifice himself for us. Thankfully, he thought I was important enough to suffer for. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure I agree, but I'm sure thankful he did. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2, the Bible says, And he, Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins. And hey, good news, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Listen to me. God allowed himself to go to the cross to be put to death and put to shame for the sins of the whole world. Not just your sin, not just my sin, but everybody's sin. I want you to think about that for a minute. The God who created all things thought it was worthy to suffer death, pain, go through everything he went through, suffered it by his own creation, the Bible says. He created us, and yet he put himself under our hands and in our hands, allowing himself to be abused by us, put to death by us, for us. That's pretty special. That's what God says is worth suffering for. That's what God says is worth sacrificing for. Now I want you to consider back in our text here what the Apostle Paul was willing to suffer for. It says in uh, verse 9 that we read in our opening, he says, Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, he was put in prison. He said, but the word of God is not, is not bound. The word of God is not bound, it says. Now, what did he say? He's saying, I am willing to do whatever it takes to get the word of God, the message of God, the message of salvation to whoever will listen. I'm willing to suffer. I'm willing to, to do all the things. If you studied the Apostle Paul's life, he was a shipwreck. He was beaten unto death by his own countrymen. He was robbed. He, uh, he just went through all kinds of stuff. He says, I am willing to do that so that the word of God can be given. The message of God and his salvation can be delivered to every single human being. That's what I think is worth suffering for. Now consider this. What are we willing to suffer for? <laughs> he said, I'm willing to, to die. I'm willing to go to jail. I'm willing to do whatever it takes so that you can get the word of God, the news that he died for your, your salvation. Notice what he says in the next verse. Verse 10. He said, therefore, I endure all things. That is everything that he endured and, and anything that he didn't endure, but he was willing to for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain 
the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Paul said, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to help you get saved. I'm willing to go to jail. I'm willing to be, be tortured. I'm willing to suffer, suffer shipwreck. I'm willing to, to, to be beaten almost to death. I'm willing to do all of those things so that people can get saved. Well, it's one thing that God did that for us. But then we notice that the Apostle Paul was willing to go along with God and, and to suffer and work alongside God and, and suffer alongside God so that God's will could be accomplished. So then I come to this thought today. What are we willing to suffer You know, I'm, again, I'm thankful that I live in the United States of America. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful that I've gotten to travel to some other places around the world and see other things, and that, that helped me. Uh, it put in perspective for me how blessed we are in the United States of America. But the reality is, Too much is given, much is required. We have a great opportunity to serve God. We have a great, not only opportunity, but we have a great means to serve God. The reality is, we have the greatest resources on planet Earth with which to get the gospel to every creature. They say, well, preacher, you know, yes, we, we have a lot of money in our country. It's not just money. It's talent. It's people. It's freedom. See, there's a lot more to this than just the, the finance. And the finance is certainly a part of that. But I want you to consider this morning that there are people in other countries in the world who will never leave their forest. They can't. But almost any of us could get on a plane tomorrow and fly to that forest. Say, well, I wouldn't. Well, you're not willing to, but it's not that you couldn't. Well, you know, preacher, I don't have that much money. You could, you could get a credit card. In the United States of America, you know you could get a credit card? The, a lot of forests don't have credit cards, by the way. Those people, when they don't have it, they don't have nothing. You know, I have a garden. It's a blessing to have a garden. My, my wife and kids work hard in that garden. Well, we can eat fresh vegetables, uh, pretty soon we'll make, maybe have some tomatoes and, you know, cucumbers and, and green beans and all that stuff. Do you realize that in America, having a garden is just a luxury? And for a lot of the world, that's how they survive. That is if the neighbors don't come steal it because they're hungry. What I'm... I, my point to us, and what I want us to consider this morning, is that here we have God sacrificing himself so that we can be saved. We have the Apostle Paul sacrificing himself to get us the word of salvation, to understand we can be saved, the message of salvation. And here we sit. And, boy, I'm sure glad he did that. I'm sure glad God did that. I'm sure thankful that Paul did that. Mm -hmm. What are we willing to do to move the message a little bit further? What are we willing to go through? What are we willing to sac sacrifice? What are we willing to suffer? Say, oh, preacher, no, you don't understand. I can't give anything for that. And yet, you'll eat that stuff that they call health food? And pay three times what it would cost to eat other stuff? 
Now, I'm not picking on you. I'm not trying to be mean with you. I'm not saying you shouldn't eat healthy. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying this. What are we going to do to get the gospel to the ends of the world? That every creature might know that God died to save, for, save them. That he sacrificed himself to pay their sin debt. What can I do? What will you sacrifice to further the kingdom of heaven? You're in 2 Timothy, and I want you to notice verse 15 with me. Notice what the Apostle Paul writes. He said, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, uh, for they will increase the, uh, unto more ungodliness. Consider what he's saying. We've got a Bible. Are we willing to sacrifice time that we might sit and study and understand what the, what the truth is? We might learn to rightly divide. We might, hey, sh we might come to church, listen to the Bible preached, listen to it explained and taught. That we might have a better concept, a better understanding of what it means so that we can then go out into the highways, the byways, and the hedges. So we can go to our workplace, so we can go to our shopping place, so we can go to our play places, and we can tell them, hey, there's a Jesus, there's a God who died for your sins so that you can go to heaven. Are we willing to take this book and study it so that other people can know Paul was willing to go through all kinds of things for the word of God's sake. What are we willing to go through for the word of God's sake? Are we willing to study to show ourselves approved? Oh, I don't have time for that. Oh, yeah, you do. But it will mean suffering. It will mean sacrificing. It will mean giving up some of our other time, our YouTube time, our television time, our, our game time, our play time, our... our Travel time, are some of these other things. Listen, the Word of God is a precious resource. It's a substance that God has given us, and a lot of times it's a wasted substance. Do we know the Word of God well enough to give an answer to him that asketh you of a reason, the hope that's in you? If we go to the store tomorrow and somebody says, hey, are you a Christian? Do you have an understanding of this book enough to be able to say, yes, I am. Can I tell you how to be? Can I share with you what I learned so that I, I got saved so you can get saved? Listen, Paul said, I'm willing to endure and suffer all things that the elect might be saved. What are we willing to do that they might be saved? He only had portions of the Word of God. We got the whole thing bound in a nice cover. By the way, notice that if there's a right way, a rightly way to divide the Word of Truth, there's a wrongly way to do it too. There's a lot of people who think they know what God says, but do you realize that you're not rightly dividing the word of truth until you know exactly what God meant because he wrote it down and you studied it to make sure that it was actually what you understood? There's a lot of people who have wrong understanding of what this book says. What's your understanding and have you studied enough? Are you willing to suffer enough and sacrifice enough time that you might know what God actually meant when he wrote this book? Look at verse 2 in our text. He says in verse number 2 of 2 Timothy, he says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Are you willing to witness? Are you willing to go? Are you willing to take the word of God to other people and help them understand their need for salvation? By the way, if God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, if he sent Jesus to die, that every man's sins might be forgiven. What are we doing to help with that cause? What are we doing to further that kingdom, that understanding? What are we doing, as Paul uh, was, was telling us here in our text verse, he said, I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Are we willing to... 
give the Bible, give the Word of God out, and faithfully teach others also. There's a TV program that has turned into quite the hit. You never would have thought so, especially with a title like Hoarders. I, I take it y'all have watched it. You know, one of the dangers of wealth, one of the dangers of living in one of the wealthiest countries in the, in, in the world, we tend to hoard. God didn't intend for us to hoard. He intended for us to give. He gave of himself. The Apostle Paul gave of himself. He says, now I want you to teach others that they might give of themselves. Because it's not about hoarding. By the way, there's no hoarders in heaven. There's no storage units up there. There's no U-Hauls pulling in. There's, there, there's none of that. Whatever you might have collected in your short life will all be left behind for someone else to throw away. God has provided us a great resource, not so that we could hoard it, but so that we could share it and give it out. So that brings me to my last point. Somebody says, he's going to finish early. I ain't done yet. Hang tight. Are you willing to give? Are you willing to give? Now, see... Somebody's thinking right now, I knew he was going to get around to money. I knew he was going to give. I, he's going to pass the plate again here in just any minute. He's going to pass the plate one more time. No, I'm not. I'm going to talk about giving, but I'm not going to talk about giving money. I want to talk about giving some other things. See, because if, if we understand and appreciate suffering, sacrifice, and, and, and the cause. The cause is getting the gospel to every creature. The cause is, is being willing to do what God did through Jesus Christ and what the Apostle Paul did his entire life until he died. It was all about giving, wasn't it? By the way, there's a whole lot more to giving than money. Are you willing to give? Look at verse 19, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 19. Say, what, what, what kind of things are you talking about giving, preacher? Verse 19, he says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ What's it say? Depart from iniquity. You want to know the greatest thing that we can give? You want to know the greatest suffering and sacrifice that we can do for Christ? Is to give up sin. Give up iniquity. Do you know the greatest thing that gets in our way of serving God and doing right by God? Is our sin. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. God wants us and needs us to give up our sin. Stop being held back. Well, uh, we're, we're selfish. We're self-centered. Our flesh wants, 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 wants. Give me, give me, give me. I want to be entertained. I, wa I want to be satisfied. I want to be full. I want to have a good life. I want to enjoy. I want you to consider something with me. Let's pretend for a minute that I really did become a millionaire. I could be going all over the world right now. I could, you know, I mean, you get a million dollars in your pocket, you can spend the interest on that and just keep going, right? 
Man, I could imagine the life. Just floating around and enjoying life and going here and going there. Take my wife back to Italy any time she wanted to. You know, it, let's just say that I had a million dollars and I didn't spend any of it, but I spent all the interest on it and I, and I lived it up my whole life. And I got to heaven. Let's just say I did get saved and got to heaven. And I didn't have anything to show for my life except all the money I spent and all the time I wasted goofing off and having enjoying that million dollars. Might I hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant? I reckon I wouldn't. Listen, God wants us to give up some things. Our ambition of, of sin and our ambition of just enjoying life and our, our selfishness and self-centeredness. By the way, I don't think God wants us to have a miserable life, but I do believe that we have a wrong idea of what an enjoyable life is. Look with me at verse 20 and, and, and 21 there in our text, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. He says, but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. I want to give you a thought about that passage. It's not going to be extensive. It's, in other words, it's not going to explain all of it to you. But I just want to give you this thought about that passage. Some of us look at that and say, oh, I want to be a vessel of gold because, man, that's the position of honor. I want to be a vessel of silver because that's really pretty. You know what we ought to do? We ought to be willing to suffer and sacrifice and say, God, because it's all of it is to bring you glory and honor. You do with me what you want and you make me whatever you want and you just use me for whatever I am. Because there isn't anything that is created that was not created for God's glory. So do you realize that no matter what you think you are, no matter what you think you might have made of yourself while you was in this life, the only purpose that you have for being here and being created is the glory of God. And no matter whether your house is full of gold uh, or silver, or no matter what you're, you think of yourself, if you don't get to heaven and having glorified God, even if you were just a wooden vessel, you have missed the whole point. Sometimes we want to fill our lives with the precious things. And we'll find out when we got to heaven that the, the things that we thought were precious on earth are, are just dirt there. You know, if you read the book of Revelation, you find out the streets in heaven are paved with gold. And I'm told that it's pushing $3,000 an ounce here. A vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared to every good work. See, that's what we ought to be desiring. That's what we ought to be suffering for and sacrificing for, is I want to bring God glory with my life. We need to give up sin, and we need to give up for God's will in our life. Give up ours and give into his. Let me give you a third thought about that. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. He said, Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolishness and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strives. 
and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. And he goes on there. But I just want to stop there and say this. We ought to give up and sacrifice on us being number one in anything. I've said this before. I don't know that I've said it in this context. But do you realize we're not in the competition with each other? I will get to heaven and God will reward me or not based on how I did compared to what he wanted me to do. He's not going to say, well, well, Mr. Kiefer, you didn't do quite as good as this other guy. Just like when, when the master issued the, the talents and one got one, one got two, the other got five. He didn't reward the guy with five because he had more than the guy with one because he had more than the guy with one in the beginning. He rewarded the guy with five because he had five more than he had when he started. And the guy with one got his taken away because he didn't have any more than when he started. See, we're not competing with one another. And, you know, on this earth, we all go around trying to figure out, well, sizing Brad up there. You know what? It isn't about us at all. Can I say that? We've got the wrong idea altogether. What we need to really understand is that it's all about Jesus. It's all about God. And what God is all interested in and all concerned about and what he sent Jesus to do is to die for the elect's sake so that we could get the gospel message to those that are supposed to get it and that will receive it. What are we going to do for the advancement of the kingdom of heaven? What are we going to do to, to bring the people to heaven that God wanted to get there? See, he said, flee those youthful lusts. <laughs> Give up on those childish and, and silly dreams and follow righteousness and faith and charity and peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But all that foolishness and unlearned questions, avoid that. They're just causing strife. They're just causing problems with people. One more thing we should give. Verses 25 and 26, he said, In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. I like that thought. Because most of the time, we don't realize it, but our thoughts and our ideas, our, ideas, our actions and our motives, they're really counterproductive. You realize that? We're doing things that are hurting us. Right? That's why it is you get upset with the doctor when you go there and he says, you know, you really ought to lose some weight, Mr. Keeper. And he writes on your, on your chart, morbidly obese in big letters so you can read it. Did he? Yeah, he did. Well, I just don't think I'm that bad. Well, the reality is it doesn't matter what we think. It doesn't matter what we've accomplished, because that's really not what's important. He says, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Uh, listen, I mess myself up more than anybody else messes me up. If God peradventure will give them, notice this, repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Listen, they need to get saved. They need to understand what God says. And what God says is important and what God wants and desires, desires and designed. Verse 26, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. You know what that says? It says there are people on planet earth right now that are enslaved 
to sin and to Satan, to his ways. And, and where he's going, they will be. But they don't have to. There are people right now on their way to hell on planet Earth. But they don't have to be. Well, preacher, what can be done? I mean, God died for them. I mean, but what else, what else can we do? We can do what Paul did. All those things that I thought were important to me in my life, younger in my life, all those ideas that I had about what was more important, what was, what was better and all that. Understand something. One day, we're going to close our eyes in death on this side. This life will be over for every one of us at some point. And we will open our eyes, spiritually speaking, in eternity. And we will really understand what was most important. But sadly, we won't have accomplished all that we should have accomplished. Because on this side, we were so busy worrying about things that didn't matter at all. And when we closed our eyes in death, we thought we had a hold of some stuff. And when we open it on the other side, we're going to realize we are empty-handed empty pocketed our bank account has been drained nothing that we thought mattered will have mattered what we need to give this morning is give ourselves to rescuing men from satan's grasp because they are trapped without hope and without help Because Jesus died on the cross, and then he said, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. And we are so preoccupied and so busy. Sacrificing, yes. Suffering, yes. But for things that have no eternal value whatsoever. Let's stand together. And let me ask you a question. Just closing your Bible and leaving it there on the seat, let me ask you a question. Are you willing to suffer? Are you willing to sacrifice for the kingdom of heaven, for God's sake? Sacrifice your time, sacrifice your sin, sacrifice yourself, sacrifice uh, your goals and your ambitions and your desires. Say, preacher, it's too late, I'm, I'm old. I want you to envision something with me. Let's pretend for a moment and we don't know, no man knows the day nor the hour. We don't, I don't know when my day is, you don't know. But let's just pretend for a moment that your day is coming up on God's calendar. Somebody, it might be today, somebody, it might be tomorrow, it might be later in the week for somebody else. But let's just imagine something. God's whole purpose for you was to save somebody from Satan's grasp. For you to be saved, and then for you to rescue someone else in this life with the gospel message. Are you going to die? For sure. Mark it down. Are you going to die without rescuing anyone? That's the whole purpose you were created. Can I give you a vision for the next week? 
find that one that you're supposed to rescue. And tell him that somebody died so that he could be saved. So he could have eternal life. Or she could have eternal life. Find that one. And then if God gives you another day, find another one. And then if he gives you another week, find another one. Because that's what it's all about. There is nothing else worth our time, our energy, our effort, our suffering, our sacrifice. Jesus died to pay for their sin and to take them to heaven. Don't sit by doing nothing and let them die. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your salvation, sacrifice. Thank you for the Apostle Paul. And thank you for his willingness to sacrifice and to write to us about it that it might challenge us, that it might inspire us, that it might help us to put things in perspective this morning, that souls might be saved, that lives might be rescued eternally from a place called hell. We ask for your blessing and your help this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. With heads still bowed, eyes still closed, the piano player is going to play. The altar is open this morning, and my question is this. Is there somebody that God puts on your heart right now that you need to begin praying about and make a plan? How am I going to witness to them? How am I going to reach them? What am I going to do? Yes, it'll take time. Yes, it may take resources. But what does God want you to do for them? He died for them. But somebody needs to take the Word of God and show them. Maybe you're here this morning, you've never accepted Christ. Nobody's looking around. You can slip out to the foyer. You'll find help there. If you don't find anybody, sit down and wait for me. I'm coming. If you're not saved, you need to be. God died for you. He sent his son to, to give his life for you so that you could go to heaven. There's people all over this globe. held by the chains of their sin bound up by Satan and God gave us the word gave us the gift of life so that we could go set them free 